What's up everyone? Eric Ross to the guy with the eye here. We're going to talk about the top tech of 2016 from CES in Las Vegas. We're not going to talk about the photo and video gear. We're going ma mainly into tech, wearables, all the different kinds of trends. Let's jump into all the trends and everything right now. We'll see some cool things from each uh, trend. So there were really five main trends coming from this and I have them as wearables, drones, VR, virtual reality, goggles and everything, cars and smart home gadgets. So a lot of these things you're gonna see, maybe you've heard some major buzz about them and maybe I'll raise awareness to one or two things that might interest you. Obviously you've seen a rise with wearables, especially with Fitbits and all these kind of smart trackers and devices and implements and shoes and everything. And there were several that stuck out from CES 2016. Now I mentioned Fitbit, I have the charge here and mainly because they really hit the market in this past 2015. So they've come out with a $200 Fitbit Blaze that will release this year. It's touchscreen, it does fitness, and it will kind of act like an Apple Watch in a way, but you won't get like Twitter, Facebook notifications, but you can still make calls, uh, messages, and everything of that sort. So the Fitbit Blaze is gonna be something interesting. You know, it really looks like an Apple Watch touchscreen. So it's getting a little more, I guess, universal and dynamic. It just doesn't look like a band. It just looks something pretty cool. And one of the biggest talked about things, and I, I don't know what, how I feel about it, but it was the Welt, and it was by Samsung. It's basically a smart belt that helped measure, accurately measure like your waist size and things of that nature. While that might not sound interesting, implementing that technology into other kind of things, maybe like BMI, into clothing and everything, you can get more accurate fitting clothing, and just you can monitor your health in more of a different way. So I don't know, that's just something that was interesting, still maybe meh to me, but uh, in the future, you might not know what that kind of technology uh, might do. A lot of you people might know Fossil as a big, especially male's watch type of brand, and they come out with pretty expensive but very nice and elegant uh, watches, but they have made smart watches that don't look like smart watches. They look like their fossil counterparts, not digital of any kind of sort, all manual type of faces, but implemented in them is you will have the app and it will still track everything while still look like a very elegant watch. The second tending tropic, Ooh, drones. Now I'm not gonna break down the video and photo aspects of these, but some of the main things that happened were the Unic Typhoon H, basically is gonna rival DJI's uh, 4K video cameras, carbon fiber, so that was really something to look into. You had the DJI Phantom 3 4K come out, and the Inspire 1 in black from, the, from one of the most popular brands out there in regards to drones. So you see kind of the shift in the movement, and the price points are pretty interesting. But one of the coolest things you will ever see is a automated one person drone. So this is called the Ehang 184, and it is a one person self driving automated drone. So it's essentially not a helicopter, but it's like a helicopter where there will be a team with you if you're uh, if you're doing this, but you will have 23 minutes of flight time for one person. There's photos and if I find video, I'll throw it up there where you you are in the drone. You are controlling it. You're controlling the camera and it uses Google Maps to find its waypoint. So and it's going to cost when it comes out uh, practically 100 to 300 thousand dollars, but it is illegal as hell right now and they're trying to see if uh, they can get it legal anywhere but it, it's not, it's just the concept is just interesting. I don't know, I would never do it because I don't want to, but it's automated and if there's something into you, it's pretty much one of the most popular things. One of the biggest movements have been for VR and virtual reality. So Oculus Rift has finally came out with something that a lot of people have wanted, but a lot of people, or it's called the Oculus Rift VR or the Oculus VR, and a lot of people are pissed off at the price point of $600 because when the founders of the company came in, they say they want to make this affordable for everyone. But with this VR, they're charging $600 for it. The price will probably adjust, hopefully. Uh, but if people are already pre-ordering and you can't even get one until June or July of 2016. So this is obviously selling well because of the huge promise that it had. But another one is from uh, HTC with Zeiss and it used the Vive, the, HT, the HTC Vive has been another one. It's just about comfort, the optics inside of it. So it's just something to be on the lookout as things really rise in the VR field this year. Now there were a lot of TVs and all that kind of sort at uh, CES 2016, but some of the interesting ones really just came down to LG, where they showed their LG 8K Ultra 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 High Definition 
uh, TV. Uh, they didn't really have a lot of video on it because not a lot of things are shot in 8K, not even 4K really and broadcasted as that, but it's just interesting to see what the technology is progressing. And I said that in my predictions video coming into this year that you're gonna see a, now a push for 8K as 4K is already into the market. It's starting to really get in there, especially with the release of Nikons and everything of that sort. So you're getting a lot of the brands that come into this now to start shooting this stuff. And I just think that's really interesting. And then they also showed a rollable display. It was an 18 inch, one millimeter thick rollable display that they say they wanna get into TVs and portability of these into this next year or two. So while that it just baffles me, I don't doubt it. Now cars have been a huge thing. Last year there was the BMW and the Tesla, the self-driving Tesla, which a lot of the YouTubers you may have seen driving these things or not driving these things, they're hand free. But two big ones really stuck out to me and it was the Chevy Bolt, which essentially gets you 200 miles to the whatever they're calling it. It's gonna cost 30K and it has a 10.2 inch touchscreen, which basically helps you control the freaking car. I just think that's pretty awesome. And that's one of the biggest awards and you know from CES 2016 in regards to smart cars. And the other thing isn't necessarily a car, it's the technology in the car. And it's the BMW AirTouch 3D. And basically it allows you to control the car and some of the uh, touchscreen into it just through a gestures, 3D gestures. So that's a cool technology you might see really coming into cars and uh, maybe other devices, which it already kind of has. I'm not really an audiophile, but I do like some good sound. And some of the good things you've heard might be the Jaybird X3 and the Freedom. Now, once again, they, they're probably better fitting, a little more comfortable. Jaybird has been one of the biggest Bluetooth brands out there. And one of the things that they're really selling this year is their app and their customizable uh, profile building so that you can uh, save your settings from one device as you control your mid-tones and whatever you do from device to device to device so that way you have the same experience no matter where you're listening to your music. So there's two more things that really have stuck out as well and it's these $500 uh, Odyssey that uses these magnets to really get the optimal sound with your smartphones. It was something that they developed last year that they showed at CES and now this year in 2016. It's going to be a $500, you know, headset. It's going to be very comfortable. It's made of leather and it, you can, for another $100, you can use a, a Cypher lightning cable that, you know, can source a 24-bit, 48 uh, gigahertz audio from your smartphone and that will be a hundred dollars check it out but it is five hundred dollars the other one was five hundred this one is fifty thousand dollars and they would be the sennheiser's orpheus so for fifty thousand dollars they're only going to be 250 of these made by Sennheiser, uh, and because they basically take one day to make one full thing you need an eight glass amplifier all these tubes inside of this amplifier that hovers over marble to get this optimal sound and ba basically it's from their art line it's distortion free and it's basically it's they say it sounds better than vinyl now if you haven't listened to vinyl you don't have to be a hipster to do that vinyl sounds freaking phenomenal and apparently these beat that for 50k <laughs> They better. I'm gonna round out the list here and it is gonna be with these smart home gadgets. And there were three that kind of intrigued me. And one of the ones starting off is the Samsung Hub Smart Fridge. And it is basically one of the smart home technologies for fridges. You're gonna see a big stainless steel refrigerator, but it has a 21.5 inch touchscreen onto it, especially onto the right side, which you'll see in this photo here. And it, it has Amazon Alexa built into it. It has a camera inside so that you can monitor what is inside of it. And I guess just to save energy and everything of that sort. And it, you could see that through your mobile app so you don't even have to be home. Maybe if you're like, oh, do we have butter? You could check through your phone and be like, no, we don't. I can go get that. While that's not practical, I guess it's something that you can do. Lastly, but not leastly, rounding this out is the Cyro. I think it's called Food Scanner. And this is a pocket-sized Bluetooth device that really uses infrared and some kind of spectrum that they developed for this that you hold up to a piece of food and it measures its fat content, its carbs, and all that kind of things that you can measure in food, saturated fats, and I just think that that's interesting to have. Now, they said they haven't used it on like big items like big chickens or whatever. You've seen them use it in cheese a lot or so, smaller, thinner devices. But the fact that you could do it, and it says it's pretty accurate when it uses that into those little things. I just think that that technology is really cool that you could, especially if you go to restaurants, they don't list the foods and the nutritional facts of it. You can bring it out. You could be like, oh, what do I want to use it on? You know, hold it up to it. And you could be like, oh, this really sucks. So this was the top tech of 2016. A lot of the stuff you may have heard about, some of it you may have not heard a word about, but it's definitely something to notate as you go into this year and the biggest trends as well. 
Tell me some of your favorites down in the comments below. Maybe I missed some of them. Tell me about that as well. And some things that you might even be buying or pre-ordered this year.